Hi, Mandra Armstrong, and welcome to the back office at Teardown Lab. I am a bit of a photographer. Actually, I'm not really. I like cameras and I like the equipment, but I don't go out and take that many photos. But I do like understanding how they work and I do play in various fields of photography. So I do like the idea of removing an infrared filter because um, the CCDs in cameras can pick up a lot more things, basically, than they're allowed to pick up. And if you remove the infrared filters, you can do apparently some magic stuff. So you've seen uh, pictures like that where they all have a sort of purpley tint. And I want to get my camera ready for that. Uh, what some people do as well, they actually remove the infrared filter and then actually remove uh, install uh, visible light filters. So the only thing the camera can see is infrared. So you can do all sorts of stuff like that, which sounds like fun, doesn't it? So I thought, why don't we have a go at this? Um, I kind of want to try to see if I can add a manual shutter to this too. This is a Panasonic Lumix. They don't have, uh, sorry, a G8, uh, GF3. They don't have a remote shutter and I always think that could be kind of useful for me. So if I'm in there and it, the, the opportunity arises to do that, I'll have a play. Now pay attention when you take all these little screws out because all these things always have little screws and digital cameras tend Ah, they tend to have a strange um, layout and it's always quite common. So once you get into a digital camera, you always tend to find the same types of circuit board all overlaid onto each other in a, in a similar sort of way. God, my, my screwdriver just freaked out there and uh, retracted itself, a bit scared. It's obviously pushing a bit too hard on it. Let's get that back out there. So uh, just be warned, if you're going to do something like this, Ooh, and I'm being a bit cautious now because there's always a ribbon cable somewhere in here. Uh, and there's two. If you're doing this at home, by the way, take care of these parts and check out the type of ribbon cable mechanism. So you can see here, this one you don't just pull out, you've got to actually lift that and it will come out zero insertion force style. You do not want to get that wrong. <laughs> Boom. That wasn't too bad. I mean, it's not that bad, is it? So we've done those outer screws. Let's see if there's any obvious ones here. I'm guessing, because we need to take out this top board, definitely, know that much. Now, in fact, let's open this up, get the battery out, let's get all the cuppings out. Probably ought to have done that first. So watch out for little springs and stuff like that too. You really don't want to lose anything when you're doing this. And I'm quite cognizant now of these screw sizes. Let's try to be careful. At least I got the video to watch back. If you're doing it at home you can watch the video too. So I'm just sort of putting them in the little... I've got a reel of tape basically. So using that as a retainer. So I'm just, I'm just eyeballing these. See that one was really short. So that one is a short one. And if you've got a pen you can always just do something like that just to sort of put a little S there. So that's... we know that was a really short one. <laughs> might help if I remember that that markings there and there's another screw right here excuse my hand get in the way so it's fascinating really these are marvels really I know probably more modern cameras have other marvels in them but these are packing a lot of stuff in a small space on a digital camera and it's not because necessary of the CPU and that sort of thing because you know that stuff's actually quite small really you can play with it at home you know you've got your Raspberry Pis and all this stuff um, but the mechanical stuff so cameras used to always be fully mechanical and then they started adding various digital butt bits to sort of aid with the focus autofocus mechanisms and all that and then now they're fully digital so you still got to fit in though all of those mechanisms do with the shutter and all of that stuff so cheap digital cameras obviously won't have those so they can still be affordable but I don't remember how much this camera was but it would have been quite expensive I think small micro four third cameras you can see why you can't just throw this thing together someone in the assembly line really would have to take a bit of care putting it together so I think we're almost there one more ribbon cable look that is a lot of ribbons to take care of it's going to be annoying if you assemble this all back up and it doesn't work Let's just be ginger now. I'm just putting a little bit of force on the board. When I say little, I mean really, genuinely, not much at all. Still want to strain anything at this point. Get that out. 
These are going to be fun to get back in. They're so tight. Ooh. So remember, one slip and it's all over. To so be cautious. If you're finding yourself getting a bit angsty, probably best just to stop for a second and get a breather. Have a breather. Have a little think. And try to figure out what's going on. Something is holding on to this board. I think it's just this edge. I hope it's just this edge. Let's have a look. Oh, got that. I'm not seeing anything obvious. I'm just going to go a little bit harder. Doesn't appear. Oh, div. What a divot. SD card. Crikey. That was putting all the force on it. There we go. So, there is your mechanism. It's quite nice if you have to replace the SD card holder or the HDMI or the. I guess that's the sort of USB data TV out jack. You can do so there. So, throw that aside for now and then we'll just keep going further in into the bowels. So to cut a long story short, by the way, the lens mechanism we're aiming at is that level there. And there'll be probably four screws holding that lens in. So we need to get more and more of this camera apart. I'm going to shut the door of the battery bay, though. I don't really want that to go tonto. There's already a little crack on mine here, I can see. Don't know who caused that. Let's see if we can get a little feel. Just working out though what you need to unscrew can be the tricky part. Do you just keep. Oh, there you go. So it was just a case of just keep bending it. Scary as hell. Neato though, that's basically that. Looks like the uh, capacitor. 300 volts, 85 microfarad capacitor for the old charging thing, and that would be where the battery goes. Pop that in the pile. Next. Ooh, that's nice, isn't it? Very nice cameras, these. Okay. Let's see what we can do. We want to get to that bad boy. So, more screws to undo. I like the idea though, if you take this all out, remember this is the point of no return. Um, well, the point of no return will be coming up soon. So if you've done that, taken out the infrared filter, you've still got the option though, right? You can always buy an infrared filter. So this is the CCD in my hand, by the way. You can always buy an infrared filter in your lens system, can't you? And pop that on. Look at that. Look at that monster. For such a small little point and click type camera, that is an absolute monster. Just to see that that's my finger by reference. Go and look at your smartphone and have a look and see how big your CCD is on that. So we do have a dust cover on this. Yes. I mean, there's an opportunity here for me to ruin the CCD, so let's be more careful. Ah, oh, look. Look. Hmm. There it is. Look at the size of that thing. That is a big old lump of blue. Just do as I say, don't do as I do. Right. Assembly is the reverse of disassembly, pretty much. Although this time there's the possibility that uh, it won't work. <laughs> if you've copped it up like I have. Okay, so putting it together now to make sure all of these cables are back 
where they should be and that particular one there is easy to trap and this one has to go around the battery so that's that bottom one is a real gotcha on it let's make sure everything else is where it should be it is indeed I'll put this PCB back in trying of course to not snag any more flexies as we get in then there flexies hello hey mr burns so we've got flexi 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 boom so good idea to pop those screws in let's get that little screw in seeing as it's the odd one out of our little trio of silver colored screws and then just the painstaking task of flexies in. So these three flexies are the most critical because they are very dense and very fragile so I'd say lead with those to give yourself the maximum amount of wiggle room. Literal, literal wiggle room. One's in, next one. So it's going to be fun for me to probe that out at some point in the future to find our shutter. I shall do it somehow. I'm hoping the shutter's a uh, internal pull-up or something, and it's being pulled to ground. It'll be easier to find. Okay. Oh no! I've lost something. Oh, phew. There it is. Almost thought. I trapped it. There's so many opportunities for trapping something that you didn't want to trap. It's a trap. Nice handy mark on the PCB for this ribbon. Ah, it's not open. <laughs> I'm wondering why it's not going in. It's not cooperating with me. It will now. There we go nicely in God. So that one's a bit awkward make sure if you're doing this you got your tweezers because that even and that looks like to be one of the simplest ones it's awkward because it's at a weird angle so when you tension it, it tries to twist very annoying way look at that gotcha got ya Again, quite a dense one there. And then this last one that we wrapped around the battery. Got a funny angle on it, but that's fine. Got it in. Woo! Have you ever been too hot? I'm too hot now, and I've got a space heater behind me, but I'm too lazy to lean over and knock it off. I just want to finish this, see what the heck it's going to do. So I'm going to prepare to sweat. Blood, sweat, and tears. Come on, you bloody thing. Oh, ooh. You know you can feel your, your temper rising sometimes. Ah, nice. Good, good, good. So I give it a few little presses on each side. So just press that side, that side, that side. Just so you're basically wiggling it in, making sure it's home. It's worth now. Just spend that little tiny extra bit of effort if you're unsure to make some things in. Oh, this, and this one's like springy, so it's trying to spring out. So if you can get a tool in or tip of your finger, it might help you keep it in place until you can get that clamped down. That's clamped. Just make sure all these end pieces are on. Dust cap. 
probably ought to have made sure the dust cap was on there first. Yes, it is. Another end piece. Good. So far, so good. Just got to get those last screws in and we're good to go. So remember at the bottom of this, around the camera mount hole, you need the four short ones. Boom, look at that. And we're there. So let's have a look. See, that looks just pretty normal actually from that perspective. It just doesn't have that bit of extra dust protection. Pop in the battery. <laughs> Please set the clock. Doggo. Set. The clock setting has been completed. So everything's got that little bit of a purple sheen. I think it's worked. You can see definitely. It's got that kind of weird purpley look on it. Mmm. Infrared filtery. So I'm wondering how to uh, really test this. If we have something, I've got a remote control. It should be super sensitive now to infrared sources. So, oh, look at that. Yeah. You never really get it that bright. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Excellent. So I guess that's worked. Now, what we can do with that, I do not know. But if you're doing this, I should imagine you've got some sort of fair idea. Brilliant. So I hope that's some use to you. Go out and try it. And then you have this nice big chunk of blueness to play with. <laughs> so thank you for watching.